guys, this is Good Daughter, and you're watching Match Review. If for some reason you haven't watched Bands and Picks review for this match, make sure you do so. In this video, we will take a look at the fifth game of the grand final of the TI3, Navi vs Alliance. Let's start with the laning phase. Admiral Bulldog playing his Nature's Prophet on the top lane, going against Phonix Batrider. Then the Solomid as Templar Assassin versus Puck played by S4. Puppy will play Enigma in the jungle. Alliance's tri lane is going aggressive to a bot lane with Lodom Chaos Knight, Ake as Crystal Maiden, and EGM on Wisp. Kuroki will roam around the map on his signature Rubik. Hvost is playing Solo Alchemist on the bot lane against an enemy's tri lane. Very bold decision by Na'Vi. Alchemist gets 2 seconds stun from CK and tether stun. He's channeling his unstable concoction and throws it on a Chaos Knight, who's also being focused by the tower. So Alchemist actually gets a pretty lucky first blood, he eats a tango and jukes into a very nice spot, which gives him an extra second to start channeling his stun. He gets revealed by Wisp's tether, but stuns Nature's Prophet right before he gets a chance to bring down Hvost. Admiral Bulldog goes down as well, before they finally kill an Alchemist. Navi lead 2-1 and the situation looks grim for Alliance from the start of the game. As soon as Hwas returns to the lane, he gets immediately initiated upon once again, with Wisp's tether stunning him in combo with CK's rift, receiving an additional damage from spirits. Now this time says Hwas and stuns the jam and then tries to juke inside of the jungle once again. Wisp immediately cuts down the trees with his tether. Vost keeps trying to juke in the trees. Vost finally gets brought down, but he gets rewarded for his effort as EGM dies from an alchemist as it's prey. As soon as Navi see Chaos Knight left alone in the lane, they initiate upon him with Rubik's Telekinesis, followed by an alchemist's unstable concoction and Enigma's Malefice. Lode is taking a lot of damage, but before he dies, he manages to throw a lucky 4 second stun at Vost, who's being focused down by the tower. Admiral Bulldog TPs just in time to get the experience for the alchemist's death. When CK responds, with the help of Wisp, he engages on Phonic's Bad Rider, who melts very fast. This could well be considered a Phonic's mistake, because there were no enemy heroes on the map, and he should have been more careful. Lack of Vision played against Alliance this time, as Dendi chased S4 towards Puppy's Enigma, who stunned him with a Malefice, followed by a Black Hole. Dendi deals enough damage, and kill goes to Puppy. As soon as Wisp takes level 6, Alliance successfully gank Poppy, with Furion TPing in to help. Here's the first team fight of the game. Navi initiate on S4, immediately bringing him down. Relocate comes in, and Wisp brings CK, and they kill Poppy, who didn't even have a chance to cast anything. Phonic is very low HP. Meanwhile, Wisp is chased down and killed. Admiral Bulldog is in the middle of the enemy team and he is brought down as well. Navi follow Ake and dive the tower. Loda tries to save him with his stun, but it's only enough for a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, S4 respawned. He TPs mid places Dream Coil on 2, and he has a double damage on top of that. Alchemist is bursted down immediately, and Dendi doesn't have refraction anymore, so he dies as well. While Dendi and Hvost are dead, Allies decide to push a mid-tier 1 tower. Two sets of trends are pushing the tower while the fight breaks out. S4 is caught with the help of stolen Illusory Orb. He's taken some serious damage but uses stick charges and escapes, dealing damage to his opponents with his spells before shifting away. Rubik is killed and Phonic barely survives on super low HP. Meanwhile, tower is brought down by trends of Nature's Prophet. Radiance top tower is under attack. Alliance are smoked up and they try to catch Puppy off guard, but they get counter initiated upon by the rest of Navi's team. As a result, S4 dies and buys back immediately. Meanwhile, Ake is killed as well. Admiral Bulldog is focusing down Puppy's Enigma to prevent his casting Black Hole. At the same time, Loda and Wisp 
relocate to help their teammates and quickly kill Kuroki. But Alchemist's unstable concoction holds Loda in place and he's brought down as well. The chase continues as Navi kill off Admiral Bulldog, who accomplishes his mission of keeping Poppy away from the fight and forcing him to use a black hole on Nature's Prophet alone, but nevertheless he could not escape and dies too. The following fight will be very long, and it all starts with the lions attempting to kill Roshan. They realize that Navi can initiate any second, and fighting in the narrow rush pit against Enigma's black hole is a bad case scenario. Navi are approaching and the lions decide to back off. Both teams have very good positioning for the fight, but no one dares to initiate, risking to lose a fight completely. After a while, Navi take a risk and start to attack Roshan, forcing the Alliance to come out. Alliance have no other choice but to go ahead and start a fight. They focus Rubik and immediately bring him down. Puppy casts a black hole, but it's cancelled by a well-placed Dream Coil. Tfanik initiates on S4 with the Flame and Lasso, and Navi successfully kill Puck. A series of buybacks come out from both teams. Loda kills Enigma, but dies shortly after himself. Admiral Bulldog kills off Bad Rider. Dendi focuses down Wisp, but EGM relocates right before dying. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet is retreating. Templar Assassin is patiently waiting for Wisp to relocate back. Wisp comes back, almost immediately tethers to a Chaos Knight, but Alchemist Stun follows him along with Dendi's right click, and EGM dies too. Akit joins his team. Wisp starts challenging his stun inside of the rush pit but gets an unlucky bash from Roshan, which prevented him from casting a spell onto an enemy target. Navi quickly kills Trent, who was scouting out. As a result, both stun himself and situation does not look good for Navi, so they try to make the best of it. They chase Crystal Maiden, and S4 jumps in, dealing a lot of magical damage, but Ake still dies. The rest of Alliance get closer, and Funny tries to push him back with a flaming break, but it only delays the fight for a second. While Buppy is finally joining his teammates, Funnick uses Flaming Lasso Nature's Prophet, who nevertheless manages to survive, kill Rubik and tries to chase down a bad rider who is barely staying alive so far. Meanwhile, S4 keeps Poppy and Dendi locked in place with his Dream Coil. Funnick tries his best to survive and blink away. Dendi comes back to the rush pit and tries to finish a Roshan. But at the same time, S4 and Wisp jump back in, and with the help of EGM's spirits, they kill off Bad Rider. Dendi keeps trying to bring down Roshan, but Gods of Random are not on his side, and he gets bashed by a stone giant three times in a row. As a result, Admiral Bulldog with Ake and S4 initiate on Dendi and kill him a second before he could kill Roshan. S4 picks up the ages, and the final outcome of the fight is not pleasant for Navi. After a series of team fights, let's take a look at the graphs to see who came out on top in the end. Navi have a 5k gold lead and 5k experience lead. As for the player's items, Puppy has a mech and a soul ring, Shadow Blade on Hvost, Dendi has his face boots and BKB, Arcane boots and Bracer on Kuroki, and Funnik has a dagger, and he's about to complete his 4 staff. Alliance are not that far behind in terms of items. Puck has a dagger and power treads. Aki only has boots and magic wand. Loda has drums and is looking to complete his BKB. Boots, Urn of Shadows and magic wand on EGM. And Nature's Prophet has power treads, shadow blade and Midas. It's hard to say who has an advantage. Navi took down two towers, so did the Alliance. Navi have a 5k gold lead and 5k experience lead, but Alliance has the Aegis. Funny quickly killed Creeps at mid and then went to the jungle. Alliance saw this and successfully ganked him in the woods. Puck and Nature's Prophet initiate with a ship stick on Bat Rider and quickly bring him down and then safely retreat.
After taking Roshan, Navi decided to take mid Rex. Not everything is easy as it seems, because Alliance take an audacious decision to split push two lanes of Navi. CK plus Wiz push bottom lane, while Nature's Prophet is pushing top. The situation looks very questionable, but Navi decide to take mid Rex. Both Navi and Alliance have a glyph. Alliance use a good timing on their glyph. S4's buyback was not wasted, as he stays back and does not let an enemy initiate upon him. If only Enigma had a black hole, there would not have been a legendary 1 million dollar dream coil from S4. But unfortunately for Navi, here it is. TPs are cancelled and both top and bottom racks of Navi are being destroyed. Phonic's efforts to distract an opponent from destroying Rax only saved Navi a couple more seconds. Meanwhile, S4 is causing a lot of trouble for Poppy and Dendi, trying to keep him away from the base for as long as possible. As a result, Poppy is forced to use a Malefice into a black hole to bring him down. Admiral Bulldog destroys second Rax at the top lane. Lorda and Wisp at the bottom lane are trying to do the same. Vost is trying to do something to prevent the inevitable. Phonic is getting focused by Admiral Bulldog and dies as a result. Loda kills Creeps with his armlet on and then quickly finishes Rax. Now it's time to retreat. He successfully does so by using his BKB. Wisp almost manages to TP out but gets Malefice stunned the last moment and dies. As a result, Navi took Alliance's mid Rax but lost two lanes of Rax themselves. After a disastrous trade of Rax, Navi decide to go mid once again. They initiate on Loda, dealing a lot of damage, but CK miraculously lives thanks to EGM body block, who gets stunned but lives for a couple more seconds using his Ghost Scepter. He accomplished his mission and saved the carry at the cost of his own life. Diary Courier, left unattended, gets killed by Bad Rider and Rubik. Fight continues as Ake gets stunned too, also uses Ghost Scepter, but gets lifted by Kuroki and killed immediately. S4 is initiated upon, but he successfully face shifts and blinks away. Chase continues as Navi players keep their focus on Wisp this time who uses a Ghost Scepter once again and saves time for CK to join a fight and help him kill a Bat Rider. Both Wisp and CK go down as well and S4 blinks away. Wasp thinks about going high ground and taking a lane, but realizes it's not possible at the moment. Then DTPs out and Wasp walks all the way back to the base. Middle tower has Now we have to return to the base to defend, but Puck once again does everything possible to prevent it and cancels Dandy's TP and holds him and Puck in place with his dream coil. Phonic is left alone, but he can't do anything against an army of illusions and he's killed immediately. Lost throws his stun, but that's the only thing he could do at this point. An army of trance, illusions and necronomicon warriors assault the throne. Glyph only delays the inevitable. Lost pops his BKB and blade mail, but he can't do much. He's had a hard time in laning phase and didn't manage to farm some big items. As a result, no chances left for Navi and throne is destroyed. Navi are defeated and Alliance become the champions of the TI3. This game was absolutely worth a grand final. Without a doubt, it can be considered a best Dota 2 game in the history. Both teams did their best and intrigue of who's going to win remained until the last moment. If a draw, could have ever been a final outcome of the game. This match would have absolutely been called a draw. This is the end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel, play Dota 2, and I'll see you in the next videos.